I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Nadine kept repeating, her face now in its strongest tone of red yet. It's not your fault, Silvani tried to assure her. You couldn't know this would happen, and neither had she. This whole situation was just too bizarre. Actually, no, was it even that bizarre? Unfortunately, that doesn't change the fact that it did happen, an irritated voice chimed in from the bathroom, or that this is the only toilet on board. At the hind wall of the room, there was a funnel-shaped hole in the floor, which got gradually thinner before leading into a thin pipe after around two lines. Apparently, that was where it had gotten stuck. The news about this mishap had sparked a lot of tone-deaf questions from the doctor, who had apparently not realized how embarrassed Nadine was about this, and had thus been sent away. The voice belonged to Ariko, their engineer, who right now was kneeling over the toilet, shining a flashlight down its hole. This thing was made for liquids, not whatever that is. Yes, we know that now. Any idea how we could solve the issue? If we reverse the suction drain, we might get the pipe free, though we'd still need to get it out somehow. Alternatively, if we give it more power, it might get it through, but we'd need to reroute that power from somewhere else. And both ideas risk killing the pump, and then we really have a problem. He stood up and turned to Nadine. What about you? You got any ideas? Nadine seemed surprised that she was talked to directly by someone who was not the princess or the doctor for once, but quickly found her voice again. Um, do you not have a Pompel? Ariko just looked at her confused. Er, Nadine? Silvani broke the silence. I think that word didn't get translated. What is that? Uh, well, it's a thing with a, like, rubber bell, sort of. No, forget it. If you don't have a word for it, you probably don't have it. That doesn't have to be the case. The translator is not perfect. If you describe it, no, it's a thing that was specifically made for clogged toilets. If you had it, you would have already tried it. That question was stupid of me. Um, water and a long stick might do the trick. Silgvani looked at her engineer. That sounds like a fairly simple solution. He crossed his forearms. Well, as silly as that sounds, we're on a spaceship, so a long stick could actually be tricky to find. Maybe the kitchen has something usable. I, if I can help with anything, don't bother. I'll figure something out. Oh, oh, okay then. It was clear that Nadine felt bad about the whole situation and wanted to make up for it. Unfortunately, there wasn't really any work Silvani could give her. They weren't exactly understaffed, quite the opposite. And for most of the important tasks, Nadine was either too short or not trained enough. And Silvani would definitely not make their savior perform some menial labor. That reminds me, I believe I haven't shown you where you can sleep yet, she said, hoping some conversation would distract her. Thank you, but I'm not tired, your highness. Not? But still, you should know where. Place here is limited, after all. While they made their way to the captain's chamber, the princess thought about a conversation starter. Unfortunately, the distance between them seemed to have grown since they had left the star treader behind. Was it because of her status? Possible. Maybe now that everything had calmed down, it had become more apparent. Um, your highness, isn't this? My room? Yes, as well as it is yours. You are free to use the bed whenever I'm not. But I'm just... Nadine, Silgvani interrupted and turned towards her. Please don't make yourself lower than you are. You are a hero. You defeated five Kirosha all on your own, unarmed. Every single Vinari on this ship is only here thanks to you. You saved them all. The small alien sat down on the floor, her back leaning against the wall. You mean I saved half of them? After being the reason the other half died in the first place. What do you mean? Silgvani asked after pausing for a moment. You mentioned secure routes. So I'd guess if you hadn't picked me up, that attack couldn't have happened. Oh, first ones, did I say that? Damn, she is sharp. Maybe, but that doesn't mean you are to blame. Blame the Kriosha. They were the ones who attacked us, after all. Or blame me, I decided to follow a dubious signal. But while I mourn the dead, you won't hear me say that I regret my decision. Nadine tilted her head to the side. But why? Just ignoring me would have saved... No! The alien girl startled and gave her an alarmed look. Silvani took deep breaths, 
trying to get her throat under control again. She then sat down as well, mimicking Nadine's pose. I apologize. Let me tell you why. It's because lives aren't numbers. But what about you? You are a princess. Aren't you way more important than me? If you measure importance by the number of people one's decisions impact, then you might call me more important. But that is all the more reason. Power is no privilege, but a duty. That sounds pretty idealistic. It is, I'm aware of that. But that's who I am, and you will find me dead before I turn my back to someone whom to help would have been in my power. Nadine kept silent for a moment before speaking again. If I can help, then I must help, she said in a way that sounded like she was quoting someone. Yeah, I guess I get it. Then, may I ask you something? Of course, go ahead. Had you not found me, had those Kivo, er, Ki, well, those insects gotten to me first, what would have happened to me? Honestly, I have no idea. We know next to nothing about the Kurosha, their culture, their language, not even their numbers. They are completely deaf to diplomatic advances. Every encounter with them so far was an attack on sight. Until today, or yesterday, I guess, I didn't even know they take prisoners because no one ever came back. Maybe they would find you useful, try to weaponize your strength or something like that. Or maybe they would deem you to dangerous and kill you. Or maybe they'd eat you. Maybe that's why they take prisoners in the first place. Sorry, but all I can do is speculate. But if they are as dangerous to you as Doc claimed, what can you even do against them? It's not like they are invincible. Blasting them with heavy stationary weapons or blowing their ship up kills them like anyone else. In space or on open battlefields, they are simply very formidable opponents. But in confined spaces, that is where they become terrifying. No one ever won against them in direct combat. She leaned back against the wall. Well, until now, that is.